Lameness disease can cause some areas of the body, such as your fingers and toes, to feel numb and cold in response to cold temperatures or stress. Now, many of you on the channel did ask me to make a video on this, so here it is, and I hope you find it helpful. In this video, we're going to discuss what Rainer's disease is, symptoms, causes, risk factors, treatment, prevention, and when to go and see your doctor. Now, in Rainer's disease, the smaller arteries that supply blood to the skin narrow in response to triggers like cold weather. This limits blood flow to the affected areas, which is called vasospasm, and it then results in symptoms of Raynaud's. Over time, the small arteries can thicken slightly and it can further limit blood flow even more. Now, in terms of signs and symptoms, the first thing that you're likely to notice are that areas of your skin can turn white, then blue. But depending on your skin colour, these colour changes may be harder or easier to see. You may also notice that you've got particularly cold fingers or toes, or you might notice other changes in the sensation of your hands or feet. So things like a numb, prickly feeling or stinging pain. Now, when the skin warms and blood flow improves, the affected areas may change colour again. They may throb, tingle or swell. Now, whilst it most commonly affects fingers and toes, it can actually affect other areas of the body. So things like the nose, the lips and ears. Now, even after you've warmed up, it can take up to 15 minutes for blood flow to return to the area. In terms of causes, experts don't fully understand the cause of Raynaud's tax, but blood vessels in the hands and feet appear to react too strongly to cold temperatures or stress. Now, cold temperatures are actually the most likely cause of an attack. Examples are things like putting hands in cold water, taking something from a freezer, or being in cold air. For some people, emotional stress can also trigger an episode. Now, I think it's interesting to know that there are two main types of the condition. Primary Raynaud's, also called Raynaud's disease, this is the most common form and it's not the result of another medical condition. It can be so mild that many people with primary Raynaud's don't seek treatment and it can actually go away on its own. There's also secondary Raynaud's, also called Raynaud's phenomenon. This develops because of another health condition. Now, although secondary Raynaud's is less common than the primary form, it does tend to be slightly more serious. Symptoms of secondary Raynaud's usually appear after the age of 40, which is later than the symptoms that appear for primary Raynaud's. Now, causes of secondary Raynaud's can include things like connective tissue diseases, so things like scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and a condition called Sjögren's syndrome, diseases of the arteries, so this can include buildup of fatty deposits in blood vessels that feed the heart, and a disorder in which the blood vessels of the hands and feet become inflamed, a type of high blood pressure that affects the arteries and the lungs may cause secondary Raynaud's. It can also be caused by carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, this condition involves pressure on a major nerve to the hand. The pressure causes numbness and pain in the hand, and this can make the hand react more to cold temperatures. Other people with secondary Raynaud's develop it because of repeated actions or vibration. So things such as typing a lot, playing piano, or doing movements like that for long periods can cause overuse injuries. So can the use of vibrating tools. So if you've got a job that uses things like jackhammers. Other people develop secondary Raynaud's due to smoking. Smoking again narrows blood vessels, as well as injuries to the hand or feet. So things like a previous wrist fracture, surgery, or episodes of frostbite. Finally, certain medicines, including beta blockers, which are used for treating high blood pressure, some migraine medicines, as well as certain anti-cancer medicines and some cold medicines. Now, in terms of risk factors for primary Raynaud's, these include being female, although both men and women can be affected, age, although again, anyone can develop the condition, primary Raynaud's often begins between the ages of 15 and 30, Climate, so the likeliness of someone developing this is more common in people who live in colder climates, and also a family history. So having a parent, sibling, or child with a disease appears to increase the risk of primary Raynaud's slightly. In terms of risk factors for developing secondary Raynaud's, these include obviously having the diseases that we talked about, so the conditions like scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. Again, having certain jobs that cause repeated trauma, such as using tools that vibrate, as well as using certain substances. So smoking, taking medicines that affect the blood vessels, and being around certain chemicals, such as vinyl chloride. Now, in terms of prevention, so to help prevent Raynaud's attacks, I would recommend that you bundle up outdoors. When it's cold, wear a hat, scarf, socks, and boots, as well as two sets of mittens or gloves. Thermal underwear may also help. 
A coat with cuffs that you can keep closed around the mittens or gloves can also prevent the hands from cold air. It's worth wearing earmuffs and wearing a face mask if the tip of your nose or your earlobes get too cold. I'd also recommend that you warm your car, so run your car heater for a few minutes before driving in cold weather. And it's worth taking care indoors, so wear socks and to take food out of the refrigerator or freezer, you could try wearing gloves, mittens or oven mitts. Some people might find it helpful to wear mittens and socks to bed during winter. Now, because air conditioning can also cause attacks, it's worth setting your air conditioner to a slightly warmer temperature, especially during summer. In terms of treatment, if you've got Raynaud's and your symptoms are very bad or getting worse, your doctor may prescribe a medicine to help improve your circulation. For example, you might be offered something called nifedipine, which is to treat high blood pressure. Again, this is going to be done on a case-by-case -case discussion with your doctor, weighing up the potential risks and benefits of doing this. Some people need to take this medicine every day, but others only use it to prevent Raynaud's, for example, during cold weather. Your doctor may also arrange other tests if they think that the Raynaud's could be a sign of an underlying condition, so something like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. You should see your doctor if you have symptoms of Raynaud's that are very bad or getting worse, the Raynaud's is affecting your daily life, your symptoms are only on one side of the body, you also have joint pains, skin rashes or muscle weakness, you're over 30 years old and get symptoms of Raynaud's for the first time, your child is under 12 years old and has symptoms of Raynaud's. Finally, I've included resources from Scleroderma and Raynaud's UK, which is a charity in the UK, which has got loads of useful resources on their website, and that's in the description box of this video. You might find that helpful and informative, and typically that website is going to contain lots more useful information that we weren't able to cover in this video. If you did enjoy the video or you've got any questions or you want to leave me a comment, please do so below and please consider liking the video and sharing it with a friend or family member. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.